So I'm quite surprised by the number of really awesome looking mounts and vehicles that you can find in Biomutant that will be helpful at traversing the environment in way more interesting and cool kinds of ways. And in this video I want to cover all of these mounts and vehicles that you can get in the game. Some of them are behind the main story campaign while others are secret ones that you need to go off the beaten path and maybe complete a few side missions and secret objectives. So let's jump into all of that and as always if you enjoyed this video at any point it would be super awesome if you left a like on it. Now I want to start things off with a couple of mounts that you should honestly not even miss upon because they will be useful all the way in the end game. The first one that you can get in the game very early on is going to be the Goo Glider or the Jet Ski which you can actually get from one of the objectives that you will complete for Goop in the Subnautica station right here on this side of the map. Now the quest line is pretty short, all you have to do is to go into a nearby cave and retrieve one of the engine parts and once you're back Goop is going to give you access to your very own jet ski. Now the Goo Glide will only work in the surf regions of the map so that would be the southeastern part of it as well as the northwestern part of it but otherwise it only starts with a level 1 engine upgrade and no parts which means you can only use it over blue waters and if you want to use it over green and murky waters you will need that level 2 or even level 3 and to to get those additional parts and upgrades you have to complete a side quest chain that opens up immediately after you get the Goo Glider which is the Goo Glide Rag Boxes. You can see them overall on the map, the second one that you get by the way even gives you the level 2 upgrade of the engine so definitely go ahead and complete at least a few of these. The next one which should follow soon after this is the Macton and this is kind of like your mechanical suit. You get this by the way from Gizmo from this side of the map in the Chalkyard by the way if you simply follow the main story campaign and eventually you're going to have to rebuild it from the ground up which is going to be done through a pretty short quest that you have to complete and once you're back to him he is going to give you access to the Macton and you will be able to immediately use it. It's most useful in the dead zone by the way especially early on when you will not have the oxygen suit so in this case it's going to protect you from hypoxia in case you don't have any resistance to that but just like like in the case of the Goo Glider, this one also has strong boxes and an associated quest line for that, where you will go all over the map and collect these strong boxes, inside of which you will find a number of parts. And you can then further customize and make it look however you want to. There's a ton of parts in there to make it look really awesome and a ton of headpieces for pretty much any style you want. But outside of the dead zone, he isn't going to be of any use. But enough with the vehicles, let's talk about a couple of really awesome secret mounts that will help you a ton with the exploration and I might even argue that one of them is extremely cute. Yeah, I talked about this NPC yesterday about Pebble that you can find right here on this side of the map right next to the dead zone and the fact that one of his first quests would give you a level to upgrade to your claw bar which was already very important. Well, if you simply continue that quest chain and open up the next one which is called Pebble's zipline test, he is going to give you another one where you will have to secure three zip lines in three different parts of the map. It might take a little bit of time to get to these locations but once you do it and go back to him, you're pretty much done with his entire quest chain and he is going to give you one last objective which is to retrieve his present. And what you have to do is simply climb that location behind him and go at the top of the mountain. In this situation all you have to do is to just follow the yellow markers that will point you to the right direction. Once you're close to the top you will notice that there's this zip line so all you have to do is to use it and it will bring you right to this nest in the center of which you will notice that there is a very cute looking bat mount. So go ahead and mount it because it's going to immediately unlock it for you and congrats you just got the bat Nam Nam, which is a really awesome looking mount. Now, technically speaking, this is not a flying mount, even though it looks like one. It's just a gliding sort of mount, but it seems to be a little bit better than your regular glider because it seems to be gliding for a little bit longer and you can also go a little bit further with it. But it looks really awesome. You can use it, of course, to traverse the regular environment, but its best use is to jump from high places and kind of glide your way down. Moving on to number three, let's Let's talk about another aquatic mount that you can actually use on any water surface, on any water region and it's not going to have the same restriction as your jet ski.
Kaminsky does. And this is called the Peewee Gargantua, which is basically kind of like a dolphin slash shark slash kind of whale looking thing. So basically, the way you do this, you have to go to Gil right here onto the northern part of the map, northwestern part of the map, as a matter of fact, and you're gonna find him right here next to his abandoned shack. So what you have to do is to actually help him get back to the water and throw his fish in the water so he can save him. You're gonna encounter a number of enemies on the way, but eventually you're going to reach the bottom area and you're gonna be able to reach that lake. Once you do that, he is going to give you a very important key that you will actually use right here into one of these enemy encampments back into the surf region. Once you're back here and cleared out the enemy, you likely encountered this shark looking creature right here that is suspended onto one of these cables. So all you have to do is to just unlock it, it's gonna fall into the water and from this point on all you have to do is to climb down and congratulations the gargantua mount is now yours. Now the advantage that this one has right here over your regular Google Glide is the fact that first of all it does not require any engine upgrades so you can travel pretty much over any surface water. Second of all you actually can cast this over any body of water so no restriction in terms of that and finally it is much much faster than your regular Google Glide even when upgraded with the maximum engine. So this is why I'm constantly using this whenever I'm finding myself near water simply because it is so much faster and so much more convenient. Moving on to number 5 there's another amazing looking mount that you can get. This is of course again main story related. It's called the Mecha Fingero and you actually get it from Wiz which is going to be located right here on this side of the map. Um, he kind of reminds me of Dr. Octavius for some reason but he's going to give you a couple of quests one of which will inevitably bring you right here to this hangar area. Once you cleared up the enemy and opened up the doors you will notice that the finger mount is right there there in the back and you can go ahead and immediately activate it. Now I really like this mount, it's one of the most unique I've seen in any game up until this point because it doesn't just like help you traverse the environment but it's also useful in combat. So it has a few mods, first of all you can use jump to jump on the enemy and pin them to the ground, then you can use the melee attack to kind of like flick them and is going to hit them with the pointer finger which is really funny honestly. Again one of the most fun mounts I've seen so far and then if you use your shooting button it's going to actually use the finger to shoot the enemy with a really devastating blow and yes it absolutely works against armor enemies and they won't deflect these shots unlike your regular shots with your own weapons. So again really awesome mount that I really enjoy and I definitely recommend getting it when you can. Now the next one is going to be the mute mount which is going to be on the 6th spot and actually you also get this, it's story related, you absolutely need it for one of the main world leaders in the game. So you actually get it from Nako right here on this side of the map, slightly to the east of course and you just have to complete a couple of quests over here where you will have to collect the saddle for the mount as well as a few other collectibles and the mount itself and once you're back to Nako she is going to actually make it ready for you and it's gonna give you access to the mute mount. Now the reason why this mount is so important is because it's one of the few or well the only mount in the game that can grab walls and rip them because yeah that's pretty much all it does and it's gonna be useful for some of the side quests in the game for a lot of the secrets that you can find and there's a ton of loot that is hidden behind these walls that only the mute mount can actually grab and destroy with the zipline. And this brings us to the final point on the list which is going to be the blimp mount or vehicle and this is going to be something that you will use onto the northern side of the map right there in that desert area. As a matter of fact some of these islands right here and some of the quests right here will not be accessible unless you unlock this first. So to unlock it you actually have to go to this waypoint right here on this side of the map called the blimp station where you will encounter this particular civilian. You can even see the blimp once you get close to that 
that area and right there at the bottom of it you will encounter Lobo. Well Lobo will actually give you a couple of quests and the first one will not even be about the blimp but actually about a different unlock and you just have to go nearby to one of these towers in the same area and um, by the way if you want to unlock that really annoying puzzle over there this is the one that worked for me it took me like about 20 minutes to like do this because I was not paying attention to how this is solvable but once you do that and it's solved you're going to open up the elevator shaft and you can go all the way up at the top where you will get and retrieve one of these mechanical dogs once you're done with that simply head back to Lobo once more she is going to complete the main quest for you but she's still not going to give you the blimp yet instead you will get a different mount and not even a mount so to speak it's actually an item that also acts as a mount and this is going to be called the ultimate helipack yes ladies and gents this is how you actually get it and it's actually one of my favorite now this is an item by the way and it's going to fit your backpack slot it comes in with a ton of bonus to key energy and energy regen but most important it has that really amazing helicopter functionality which by the way it means that you can couple this with your glider or other means of transportation so overall simply in love with this backpack kind of reminds me of ratchet and clank but yeah you're going to be using this one pretty much all the time once you get it now after you're done with this go ahead and also start the next quest for lobo in the chain and this is going to actually be for the blimp itself you just have to retrieve one of these anchors from one of these abandoned ships really close by so go ahead and complete that as well and once you're done with this you then unlock the blimp and yes this is fully usable it does fly by the way so this means you can also go over the water or over the canyons with it you can't really like go over the mountains and whatnot and it's also only restricted in that final area in the northern side of the map because according to the lore and to the game it's the only place where you have those gust of winds um yeah powerful enough to actually help you use the blimp so it's going to be useful to reach the other islands in the northern side of the map as well now this is going to bring you to the last gadget that will also act as a mount and using that blimp you can reach this northern peak of the map of this island right here where you will encounter one final npc called soul and he is going to give you a couple of important quests one of which will have you retrieve a number of pages for his important book and yes you have to travel a little bit for that and defeat some enemies but once you're back to him he is going to give you access to his very own present which is going to be nearby by the way and is going to be located right inside of this briefcase and is going to be called soul's trunk at first i had no clue what this is and the reason is because it acts exactly as the helipack backpack so you have to equip it and once you've done that you're pretty much going to be able to use it as a flying kind of mount so yes this absolutely flies you can use it anywhere you please just keep in mind that it doesn't actually work indefinitely it only flies for about five seconds give or take but it's still going to be useful to reach higher up areas and this is it with all of the unlockable mounts that you can get in the game now there was another one that you use in a specific quest but you only use it during that quest so i will not talk about it since it's also a little bit spoilery and you will get it anyway once you progress through the main campaign this is it, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.